In 2009, the World Bank estimated the value of uh, revenue accruing to organized crime in Africa to be $1.3 trillion. This figure rose to $3.3 trillion by 2011, a 50 percent increase. In each of those years, the value of organized crime economy far exceeded Africa's total GDP, signifying that organized crime economy is way bigger than the former economy in Africa. It became evident that the impact of organized crime was far more serious than ever estimated. It was the principal source of illicit financial flow and a major obstacle to development. Organized crime affects every segment of society from state actors to local communities. It fuels corruption and influence conflicts, terrorism and violent crimes. It was against this backdrop that the European Union supported the creation of a program to enhance Africa's response to transnational organized crime that we call today ENACT. ENACT is implemented by a partnership of expert organizations, which we call a consortium, namely the Institute for Security Studies, the Interpol, and the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime, which Laura represents. ENACT works to mitigate the impact of transnational organized crime in Africa on development, governance, security, and the rule of law. It achieves this through two ways. Firstly, by building knowledge and offering evidence-based analysis of TOC in Africa. Secondly, enact build skills and capacity among African stakeholders to better respond to transnational organized crime and mitigate its impact on development and security. The Organized Crime Index and the regional observatories are two of the principal outputs of the uh, project provided in the description of action, which is the project contractual agreement. Laura has presented a comprehensive overview of the index. I will therefore focus my remarks on the observatories. In doing so, I wish to answer three main questions. The first relates to explain the regional observatories. The second, I wish to draw from the ROCOS data and how it helps to understand regional organized crime trends in Africa. Some of the trends that uh, Laura has already presented in the index. And thirdly, I wish to reflect on how the index data and ROCOS, uh, that is the regional organized crime observatories, uh, could be useful, uh, could be a useful security tool uh, for justice actors and uh, civil society and academic or research organizations. Uh, before I do that, let, let's uh, me first of all quickly look at what we mean by an observatory, as this was a key debate uh, in setting up the, uh, the regional observatories in Africa. An observatory is a scientific term for the monitoring of phenomena for the purpose of early warning or to control their behaviors. The monitoring involves the mining of data to determine trends and patterns. Observatories carry out a wide range of functions or activities. In the case of organized crime, an observatory is a monitoring tool that seeks to detect trends for the purpose of developing evidence-based strategies for prevention and combating of certain transnational organized crime conduct. The observatories contribute to the goal of uh, improving evidence-based uh, knowledge on transnational organized crime in Africa. It also helps to, uh, for us to be able to figure out the impact on governance, development, security, and the rule of law. 
uh, during the debate uh, that we had in setting up uh, the ROCOS, the regional observatories, uh, we, we, there were key elements that we thought need to underpin the observatories. One, an observatory is an in, it's not an individual. It is an institution comprising of several people working together on different aspects of organized crime. It encompasses many things and serves as a tool for the collection of data, verification of data, networking for the measurement and evaluation of organized crime and the processes of data collection. An observatory could be public or private. Its key requirements are reliability, credibility, and efficiency. An observatory should be able to produce its own data or information and should act as a support for only the data production and analysis and also to emulate the data itself. Observatories succeed or fail depending on their ability to coordinate data and data sources and manage stakeholders as well. In Africa, more than in any other region of the world, observatories function on every limited amount, on very limited amount of data sources in the first stage. And also we found that most of our observatories are not well equipped and are not also efficiently used, whether by government and other stakeholders. Observatories should be uh, independent, well equipped, and have high integrity. In designing observatories, the following should be taken into consideration. One, that data is the basis and is time consuming. The second observation is that how an observatory is designed is important for its success. And the dissemination of information is important. An observatory should seek to work with the media and also through broad network of contact, meaning that the database of stakeholders should be an important tool for an observatory. In 2017 and 2018, we operationalized the Enact observatories in the five regions in Africa. The observatories are based in Yaoundé, Cameroon for Central Africa, in Nairobi, Kenya for Eastern and Horn of Africa, in Tunis, Tunisia for North Africa, and the Maghreb region, in Dakar for West Africa region, and in Pretoria for Southern Africa. I also happen to be the observatory or the regional coordinator for Southern Africa. Each observatory consists of two staff members, that's uh, at the start, a regional observatory coordinator, the ROCO as we call them, and a researcher. The functions of each observatory are to monitor organized crime development and event in their respective regions, collect data and discern regional trends and markers, issue early warning and raise awareness on organized crime trends, contribute to the index, which Laura has presented, and conduct research and make recommendations for effective strategies and responses to organized crime. According to the description of action, the DOA, the ROCOS should function to develop and maintain relationships with regional policy makers and practitioners and undertake meetings, briefings, seminars, as well as implementing training activities to complete the capacity building aspect of the project. The observatories have a range of tools to issue their findings. These include trends report, which is a document we publish of about 600 words, an observer piece, which is another short publication consisting of about 1000 words, an explainer, which we don't really define the word limit because it's just a snapshot of an explanation of uh, a theme or a concept 
that we are dealing with. A policy brief, which consists between 3,000 and 6,000 words. A research report that consists of between 7,000 and 12,000 words. And of course, through the index that they can use to issue some of their data findings. The DOA also states that the research will utilize open source policy and broad dissemination strategy with the intent to inform, raise awareness, catalyze and support political momentum for key stakeholders, in particular at the level of the African Union and regional economic communities, which we call the RECs, policymakers on possible strategies and responses to transnational organized crime. The ROCOs are therefore designed to be the key contributors, if not the custodians of the index. Each ROCO should be able, should be responsible for the profiles and data for, set, for, for the set of countries in its region. The ROCOs have produced nearly 200 observer pieces between 2017 and 2020. And train, so 200 observer pieces and trend reports for this period. This report, to some extent, corroborates the trends and dynamics that we see in the index that Laura has presented. Through such reports, we have also been able to detect emerging crimes and the complex nature of organized crime and its nexus with terrorism, conflict, gangsterism, and other forms of cross-border criminality. The ROCOs have offered a new narrative for some of Africa's HO conflict, such as the farmers grazers dispute. Through what may appear as an, an, an anthropological observation by the ROCOs, it is now an irrefutable fact that organized crime is at the root of this conflict that we see across the continent. For example, cattle rustling is a well-coordinated banditry with different actors or stakeholders at different levels and farms, different levels from farms to market. Um, we can also take an example in Northern Nigeria, where in some of the states, the, uh, at the illegal artisanal mining of gold has resulted in banditry and conflict across some of the states in the region. This evidence was not previously uh, available until the ROCOs started uh, analysis to find this out. Now, this has been explained in a variation of the cost of meat and trends in cattle rustling. So if you take, for example, the cattle rustling uh, issue, which we believe that is an aspect of organized crime because it is well coordinated with various actors along the lines. Now, if you also look at <clears throat> how this functions, say you take the price of meat, whenever you see the price of meat high, you are also likely to find a high uh, uh, rate of cattle rustling. So the rate of cattle rustling increases with the price of meat, um, which is uh, showing that you know, um, the actors or the perpetrators of cattle rustling are actually following the money. We've also revealed, and uh, we've also revealed how organized crime is embedded uh, in ordinary lives of people in North Africa and how it has been an adjunct to terrorism and violent extremism in the region. From the huge black market of Gaddafi's arms to trafficking of cultural artifacts, organized crime in North Africa is buried in secrecy. Uh, but with research and consistent observations, we can uncover the secret behind. The ROCOS report, like the index that uh, Laura has presented, show clearly that corruption is the elephant in Africa's organized crime discourse. Though it is treated as a driver and catalyst, it goes way beyond that because it, it is a crime itself. And no region or country in the continent has been spared. 
by the scourge of corruption. Just like the index shows, it is now easier than ever before to map out criminal markets in Africa. For example, as Laura has presented, drug trafficking as an indicator might not give you the full picture, but once you break it down into different types of drugs, uh, huge regional disparities emerge. Take, for example, heroin trafficking. It's more prevalent in Southern Africa than in West Africa, which remains the hub for cocaine. Because of cultural influences, cannabis consumption is more prevalent in North Africa than in most part of the continent. Cat is, for example, a drug of preference in the Horn of Africa, where Somalia actually is a center, which has held the epicenter for centuries. Illegal logging and bushmeat hunting is heavily localized in Central Africa, while West Africa leads the continent in terms of the illegal arms circulating in the read on the continent. The biggest challenges so far that we face with criminal markets in Africa are one, the huge informal sector of the, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the continent's economy, which is exploited by criminals. Secondly, the prevalence of corruption is uh, what many have referred to as cancer. Thirdly, the huge ungoverned spaces, weak institutions, and at times failed states contribute to organized crime. There is also issues related to poverty and the disproportionate youth unemployment across the continent, porous borders, and the prevalence of conflict, terrorism, and crime are all enablers and causes, and sometimes root causes, of transnational organized crime, which survives in conditions of lawlessness and anarchy. Inadequate interstate cooperation and weak collective security culture on the continent may also be blamed. We've also made the tax of building resilience a very daunting and challenging one. One may also add that the continent's natural resources have been a key factor for the spread of organized crime across the continent. If you take the Democratic Republic of Congo, for example, which is saturated with foreign companies, many of which behave like mafia groups and highly corrupt, organized crime is a permanent reality. So if you take the map of Africa and can locate where the natural resources are, you will also find organized crime, terrorism, and conflict. As I've stated earlier, the primary purpose for the observatories and the index is to enhance Africa's responses to organized crime. Our theory of change is that with a better understanding of organized crime from both geographical and thematic perspectives, we can better prioritize sectors and design tailor and more targeted responses. As much as we target government and pan-African institutions like the African Union and the regional economic communities, we believe that the index and the observatories will be useful for civil society, private sector, and the academic institutions, as well as other stakeholders involved in the prevention and combating of organized crime in Africa. The ROCO's information and the index could be reliable sources for further research and analysis, which could increase understanding of organized crime. We are already working with some of these actors, some of the stakeholders, including state actors, especially law enforcement agencies, civil society, journalists, and other stakeholders, not only as partners of our research, but also to build their capacity for analysis and effective responses to organized crime. So while we do research, we partner with them to do research, we also partner with them to improve their capacity to respond to organized crime. We also consulted, as Laura has mentioned, 
civil society organizations, research, academic institutions, and journalists in the development of the index. No index is completed or no index is complete uh, in one year or two or even three years. An index is a work in progress and this one is no exception. What is missing so far in my view is the voice of the state. And I believe that this will be the next phase of the index once there is greater public engagement with it. In conclusion, I wish to thank the ACSS for organizing this webinar on the index. We could not ask for anything more. Such forums are vital in promoting not only awareness, but also public knowledge and access to the index. And together we can improve our responses to transnational organized crime. Personally, I'm very grateful for the opportunity accorded to me and my colleague, Laura, to be here and share our thought with you. I'm also delighted to be back at the ACSS, though virtually this time, after many years of hiatus. Um, I was also delighted to see such a broad representation of African countries in the participant list. So I thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions and comments.